gospel, the lectionary is already set to the gospel order. So, it's right there. Oh, okay. Got it.
Good afternoon. And welcome to the celebration of Mary Claire and Patrick's 40th wedding anniversary. Today is the Feast of Pentecost. I am Michelle Ford Knott, a friend and cantor here at St. Francis Xavier. Before we begin, please be sure to silence your cell phones. As we worship together today, Patrick and Mary Claire ask everyone to sing and respond with full voices. Song lyrics are in your program and can also be found in the ritual songbook. Now, please stand for our opening hymn, number 806, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 806, or the lyrics are found in your programs. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. I know I speak for Fathers Wayne and Joe when I say that it's a great honor to be here with your family and your friends celebrating such a wonderful occasion, the 40 years of your marriage together. On the Pentecost, the feast of the firm trust that in Christ who makes us strong, we can do all things. So let us take a moment to open our hearts to his mercy for our sin takes away that ability and makes us doubt it. Let us call to mind the Lord's mercy and invoke it with great confidence. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have have greatly sinned in my my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, 
and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. The response is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a, body, as a body is one, uh, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we were all given to drink of one spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you O lord on the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the jews jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them peace be with you when he had said this he showed them his hands and his side The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. A couple weeks ago, I had dinner with Mary Claire and Patrick. It was a very pleasant evening, and we talked a lot about what was going to happen today and what they wanted to do, and um, got into faith and disappointment and marriage and all kinds of stuff, and, and it got kind of interesting at this moment. I don't exactly remember what you said, Mary Claire, but it was something like, what happens if you die? You know, and Patrick flashed her this big smile and said, you'd be fine, (laughs) you know. It was such an intimate moment, I felt like maybe I should excuse myself, you know. But it was beautiful and very private. And it was sort of a privilege to be there the whole evening. 
It reminds me of another kind of intimate moment that is uh, sort of invented by Isaac, Isaac Dinesen in her short story, The Second Meeting. So the context is that in Genoa, Lord Byron meets a man who had saved his life years before on the island of Malta. He had given the man a large sum of money in thanksgiving, and during this second meeting, the man explains that he had bought a puppet theater with the money. He tells Byron about the new show that he wants to mount, which is based on the Pentecost story. So he describes how on, this, on the stage will be uh, the men, the apostles, cowering in fear and pale uh, under the, the wind and the flames coming down upon them. One slim and graceful figure only, my lord, in this hour of the hurricane remains serene. The virgin stands unmoving, her face turned upwards, her hands crossed upon her breast. As you will know from the paintings, upon Good Friday, all the blood had sunk from her face. Now once more it mounts to her cheeks in one sweet roseate wave, and she again looks like a maiden of 15. In a low voice, and for this I shall have to use my loveliest soprano, she cries out, oh, it's you. I find Denison writes beautifully and provocatively about the mysteries of our faith. She was obviously fascinated by them, and it's ironic because she didn't believe them. She wasn't Christian. Although she was looking for something to give meaning to her life throughout all of it, and including her suffering, fascinated by the faith without being able to give herself to it. Um, and so she's kind of going against the grain of what we usually think of at the Pentecost, which is those men, right? Those apostles who are going to do great things, who are, are going to be changed from cowering ninnies into great heroes, the kind of men that our culture loves to hear about, the kind of men that we pay big money to go to the uh, movies and see. His name is Max, and his life is blood and fire. That's what Rolling Stone says about the greatest action movie of all time, according to them. But Denison had the imagination to focus on the women, and particularly on the Blessed Virgin, who Luke suggests were there, but we never think about them. Um, she is the only one who knew this person who came. This is the same person who had come down upon her in Nazareth 34 years before. She meets him again, and all is at once made new, and the mother of Jesus becomes the mother of the church at Pentecost. Back in Denison's story, the man who saved Byron's life tells him, between that remote first meeting and this second meeting lies the story. So what I would say, because I've been thinking about it for two weeks, what I saw that night at your table, two people who believe that they're part of a story. Their childhood, their youth, their courtship and their marriage, their 40 years together, all the graces they have received, including you, they point beyond Mary, Claire, and Patrick to a second meeting, a meeting in the New Jerusalem, a meeting for which they are striving to be found worthy in a very beautiful way. This, I think, is the great and holy mystery St. Paul talks about in his letter to the Ephesians, the mystery of Christ and the church, the mystery of one flesh. This is what makes the church believe that I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. That, I think, was the message in that smile, in that shrug, 
and that little, you'll be fine, right? Lives founded on the great mystery of Christ's love for the church. The Birminghams, I would say, are a microcosm of the one flesh mystery of Christ and the church. They are a tiny, imperfect, halting image of that mystery, but nonetheless a beautiful one and a true one, and one at which we can look in wonder and in awe. You might not have known that when we got dressed and came to church today, but we know it now. All that remains is that we look at them and that we blush and we say, oh, it's you. I, Patrick, take you, Mary Claire, for my lawful wife, to have and to hold from this time forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. I, Mary Claire, take you, Patrick, to be my lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or worse, in sickness, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. May God, in his mercy, bring to completion what he has begun in you. What he has united may no man separate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Trusting in God as in our Father, let us put all of our needs into the Lord's hands. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Patrick and Mary Claire, who give thanks today for God's loving presence in their 40 years of marriage, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide their lives as husband and wife. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our prayer. For the family, relatives, and friends of Patrick and Mary Claire, who have supported them with love and faith throughout their marriage, that they may be blessed with such loving support in their time of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the Holy Church and her leaders, Pope Francis, Cardinal Supich, Bishop Mark, Father Wayne, and Father Joe, and all of our bishops, clergy, and religious, that the Holy Spirit will guide them to build up the church as the living sacrament of God's presence in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all leaders of government, uh, that they follow the Holy Spirit's guidance to work for peace, protect life, and uphold human dignity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those uh, who are suffering from illness, loneliness, or any form of distress, that they may be strengthened and healed by the Holy Spirit and handed by friends and community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Francis and Claire Hersey and William Birmingham, and the beloved relatives and friends of all here today, may they know the peace and fullness of eternal life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the needs and intention we offer now in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers we offer you this afternoon. We offer them because we trust in your love. We offer them in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing number 1016, covenant hymn number 1016.
path lead where you dream, I will follow. To dream with you is my delight. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed on the, Hol the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance to your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, his father, to be blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, the Saint Francis Xavier, and all the saints, and confident especially in your presence, we rely for unfailing. In the sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, Blake, our bishop, Bishop Bartosik, and the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Come uh, to the foot of the altar, please, uh, right there. Dear friends, let us ask God for his continued blessing upon Mary Claire and Patrick. Holy Father, creator of the universe, maker of man and woman in your own likeness, source of blessing for married life, we humbly pray to you for this woman united with her husband in this sacrament of marriage. May your fullest blessing come upon her and her husband so that they may rejoice in all of your gifts. May they both praise you when they are happy and turn to you in their sorrows. May they be glad that you help them in their work and know that you are with them in their need. May they pray to you in the community of the church and be your witnesses in the world. May they reach old age in the company of their friends and come at last to the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with, peace you. Be with you, Joe.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Communion song is 1023. I received the living God, number 1023. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord.
I got it. Got it. The Lord be with you. I always say the sweeter the amen uh, after each invocation, the sweeter the blessing that falls upon the uh, couple. Mary Claire and Patrick, may the Lord Jesus, who graced the marriage at Cana by his presence, bless you and your loved ones. May he who loved the church to the end unceasingly pour out his love into your hearts. May the Lord grant that bearing witness to faith in his resurrection, you may await with joy the blessed hope to come. And may God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. As we go forth, please sing in, join in singing Ode to Joy.